You know, you don't always need to create a UV channel for your meshes. You can calculate them directly inside the material by using rendering data available to you. The logic is the same we apply when we word align a texture, do triplanar mapping and so on. But there's no reason to limit ourselves to only planar projections. Also because I've already covered them in one of my very first videos. Today we're gonna discover how to create a cylindrical and a spherical mapping plus another one that, as far as I know, I've invented while creating this video for you. Let's start simple. To create a cylindrical map means inscribing a mesh into a cylinder and project its surface on the other surface, coordinates following. Let's start by centering the word position data to the object position. The V coordinate is very easy to obtain. We can just isolate the last component of the local position and scale it down to a range that fits the mesh size, like the object diameter. Now we need to generate the gradient for the U in such a way that it goes around the mesh. Let's grab the remaining two components of the local position. What we have now is a bunch of vectors that point from a vertical line at the center of the mesh to every point on the surface, horizontally. Basically, the data we are looking for the U gradient is the angle of rotation of each one of these vectors, remapped in 0-1 range. We can calculate it by using the arctangent2 function, which will give us the angle of rotation of a 2D vector starting from its components. As always, the result of an inverse first trigonometric function is in radians, so we can divide it by pi to bring it to minus 1 to 1 range. We're going for this range because in a round shape, like a cylinder, usually having the u tiling twice the v results in a better texture proportions. One may think that this is where it ends, but these UVs have two problems. The most apparent one is that if we go and scale these UVs we get a seam, unless we scale by an integer factor. Well, the solution is pretty straightforward, we just remove the fractional part from the factor when we apply it to the U. The other problem is much harder to notice. This break in the continuity of the UVs will cause issues to the texture MIP map selection, creating this artifact. We already encountered this issue in this other video, so I won't repeat the explanation, the fix is the same. We have to compute a continuous version of our UVs with a matching speed, so we can pass them through the explicit calculation of the derivatives, which are the starting point for the MIP map selection. For this case we can start by simply duplicating over everything relative to the U. Alright, we need to replace the arctangent2 function with something else similar, the same is coming from here. Hmm, let's try with the standard arctangent function. Cool, now we have two seams, but notice that these two gradients are perfectly symmetrical. We can flip one of them by using the sign of our R component. Nice, let's hook it up to the rest and calculate the derivatives of the final result. And those annoying pixels are gone. With few little changes, we can transform this cylindrical mapping into a spherical one. This time we normalize the local position vectors, because even though the U data we need is the same, we need an angle for the V2. So, let's remove the remapping and let's calculate side angle by doing the arcosine of the Z component. This is because isolating the Z component of a normalized vector is like doing its dot product against the word up vector, and the dot product between two normalized vectors equals to the cosine of the angle between the two. Cool, since this is now an angle expressed in radians 2, it should be divided by p as well, to convert it to the 0-1 range. Just to keep the nodes a bit more tidy, we can obtain the same result by moving the division we already have after the append, so that we remap both coordinates at the same time. Everything else stays the same. We still have the same discontinuity problem, so we must keep the explicit derivatives too. And now for the main event, the UV mapping that I've invented exclusively for you in this video. I got the idea from the solution I used in this video to create a fisheye lens distortion post-process. Don't ask me how, it just happened. What I imagined was like treating the texture as a sort of blanket that you can use to cover and wrap around the mesh. 
To achieve that, let's imagine that the highest point of our mesh corresponds to the center of the texture blanket, which is laying completely flat before starting to fall down. We isolate and renormalize the first two components of our local position, which gives us the direction of each point from the center of the blanket. Then we calculate the distance from the center of each one of these points by using the third coordinate. What we need is exactly the same thing we already needed for the spherical mapping. We calculate the angle with the arcosine and normalize the value. The difference is that now this is not a coordinate of its own, but the length of every UV vector, so we have to combine it to the directions with a multiplication. Last thing is to actually put the center of the UVs on the current position by remapping the final result from minus 1 to 1 range to 0 1 and add the scaling option. I think this is not bad at all. First of all, there are no discontinuities, and secondly, there's only one point of pixel singularity. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention. Any type of UV that you compute directly in the shader won't work with your normal maps. Not by default, at least. The normal maps we usually apply in materials store vectors in tangent space. Said space is computed by using the first UV channel of the mesh as base. It means that if we use data that is any different than that, we're gonna read the vectors from the wrong system of reference, which will result in broken normals. Good news is that it's possible to recompute the tangent space relative to our custom UVs. Bad news is that you should subscribe to my channel since this is a topic of itself that I won't tackle in this video. But another good news is that Unreal has a material function ready to do exactly that. Just hook the UVs and the tangent space normals you want to fix. Just keep in mind that the result is in worse space, so either we transform it back to the original tangent space or we set the whole shader to work in worse space. As always, thanks to my patron for the support. This material will be available to them for free. And I'll see you in my next video.